I did my documentary project over 180 degrees south. Some key terms are Patagonia region in South America shared by Argentina and Chile with the Andes Mountains as its dividing lines. Rapa Nui or Easter Island, a Chilean territory and is a remote volcanic island. The Moai are carved human figurines on Easter Island and the Cerro Corcovado is a stratovolcano located south of the Yelcho River in Palina Province, Los Lagos region in Chile. Just as a brief overview, 180 Degrees South is a film that follows a man, Jeff Johnson's journey to Patagonia to climb Cerro Corcovado Volcano, in which he discovered from the inspiration from his heroes, Yvonne Trunard and Doug Tompkins, whose own journey back in 1968. During the journey, Jeff's crew's mass snaps in half and they end up on the island Rapa Nui or Easter Island for several weeks. While on the island, they meet a woman named Alicia Mackay, who was a surfer. It was here on this island where Jeff surfed his longest wave and invited Makohi to come along to on the journey to the Cerro Cor Cavado volcano. While they were on the island, Jeff learns of the Moai figurines and how the many tribes had depleted the forest in order to make the figurines and began wars and battles amongst each other when the forest was gone. He also learned from a friend's father that, that today the local fishermen have been pushed out by the industrial fishermen in which it is quickly depleting the native fish species in the area. After the several weeks on the island and they fixed after they fix their mask, the group begins the journey once again to Corcovado Volcano. Once they get to the volcano, they begin to climb, only to go 200 feet from the summit, in which they halt because of safety concerns for the group. What is the central question to the documentary? So the central message of the film is conservation. Jeff is following and retracing the 1968 journey of his heroes by surfing the longest wave and climbing the Cerro Corcovado volcano, which is all fueled by the adrenaline rush of adventure. It isn't until later on that it shifts on being more about conservation by wanting to protect these wild areas from becoming into large industrial sites. What are some alternate views that the documentary did not show? They, they did not explain into more depth of Chinoid and Tompkins working to buy up Chilean land in Patagonia. And they did not talk um, 
I wish they would have talked more about the consumerism of the mind resources. How does this film influence the lives of everyday people who are not professional athletes? It influences everyday people to find within themselves to be aware of the world we live in, that it is a time of doing and exploring the areas around us before they are gone and no longer exist. It puts into perspective that our world, as beautiful as it is, is always changing and adapting, especially to the new age of technology, which begins to diminish our outdoor resources, which should be viewed as saving many of these wild areas, such as Patagonia, Rapa Nui, and even those in the U.S., such as Yosemite and Yellowstone. It is important to keep these areas in mind with conservation in order for our future generations to be able to see and experience themselves and not just shown photographs of what it used to be. How is the subject or subjects oriented to the natural world around them? All the subjects within this film are so attuned to nature, it's crazy from an outsider's point of view. The main guy, Jeff Johnson, follows the journey of his heroes, Yvonne Trunard and Doug Tompkins, who are respectfully the owners and CEOs of Patagonia and North Face Apparel. Jeff quotes in the beginning of the film, if I don't get on that boat, I know exactly what I am going home to. However, if I do get on that boat, my future is unwritten, which shows that it is extreme dedication to surf the longest wave in Rapa Nui and to climb the Cerro Corcovado volcano while learning about the environmental disasters that these places are facing as well, shows that they view nature as a child in which it should be protected and preserved no matter the, the costs, which is very eye-opening. What makes the documentary interesting? What makes this documentary interesting is just the idea that traveling and being able to experience these places like Patagonia and Rapa Nui just on a whim because of your inspiration to follow in the footsteps of people who have done it before you is just amazing. It is interesting to see how Jeff's thought process changes from being so excited for the journey and adventure to changing to one of understanding and and almost defiance to the way the environmental disasters are affecting everyday life for some people like the local fishermen from R Rapa Nui. It is interesting to see the understanding and learning why we should preserve and protect these wild areas from things like technology and industrial factories. It makes a person appreciate the earth and the world and to strive to be better so future generations to come will continue to have the opportunities to experience things such as climbing Cerro Corcovado volcano or getting to surf our oceans. It is a wonderful experience for those who care deeply on how we are impacting our environment and should be and should be cared for accordingly. It would be a shame not only to ourselves but for our future generations if we continue to 
to destroy these places. A terrible shame if our future generation could only experience these monuments and mountains and even the oceans only through pictures of those who had who had the opportunity to experience it lifetimes ago, which is what makes this film ultimately interesting regarding nature in general and the effect it has on a person who might even who might not even visit Patagonia or Rapa Nui in their lifetime.